Hey guys, welcome back, or bomb here, bringing you another episode of our PTCGO Live the content, day two of PTCGO. <clears throat> I'm excited to get into it. Thank you guys all for so much for the support for the first episode. If you haven't seen it, it was uploaded pretty late in the day. Uh, completely out of my control. Actually, I'm recording this really, really late as well, just because I had to go to work because I got called in on my day that I plan on recording three videos. So, <laughs> looks like we're going to be having a lot of late nights to record this, to make this 10 straight days, but I think it's going to be worth it. It's always a lot of fun recording these videos. <clears throat> but let's get into the video today. I know a lot of my viewers did want to see me play Duskman Necrozma next. I know I had to trade away one of my Flare Cynthia's I got online to get these Necrozmas. But I'm pretty happy with the list so far. Uh, I've been playing. Where is it? Oh, I think it's called Zone. There it is, Dust Moon Zone, there it is. I'm pretty happy with the list so far. I've been playing it a lot uh, here and there, just testing out consistency and numbers and things like that. And I had a lot of fun with it. This is Dusk Main the Krasma Magnazone with some metal friends as well. So, before we get into the video, uh, consider subscribing and like the video if you guys appreciate if you guys like TCGO content, appreciate the content I'm putting out for you guys. Remember, let's try to get this video to 30 likes. I'm sure if we can get all these TCGO videos I upload for the next couple days for 30 likes. I might just do another five days in a row. It's really up to you guys. We'll see. We will see. Now, uh, Dust, Dust Me in the Crossbow does have 190 HP. It's a basic metal type Pokemon and an Ultra Beast Pokemon as well. Uh, that doesn't really come into play right now, but it could come into play in the future. Whew, it has uh, some pretty good stats here. I'm running out of breath as I just ran upstairs to start recording this so I could get to streaming after. <clears throat> but it does have three pretty, three pretty decent attacks here. Claw Slash is 60, which a lot of people sleep on Claw Slash. Claw Slash is a good attack because you can knock out babies with it. Like I'm talking Zoruas, other Magnemites, other 6 HP Pokemon like Rowlets. So Claw Slash in itself is decent. It's three energies, but I mean, it doesn't make you discard. Unlike Meteor Tempest over here, which is discard three energies from this Pokemon, but you're hitting for a massive, absurdly heavy, 220 damage 250 with a choice ban which fun fact i don't think there's anything in the game right now that's not true uh as far as i guess some muscle dumbbells pokemon i think like muck gx has 220 hp it can survive a banded meteor tempest but i don't know of any stage ones that could hold a muscle dumbbell and survive a banded attack because I don't know if there's any of them that resist metal. I know there's no basics, even something like Zergatry with a Fighting Fury Belt and the Stadium out still gets knocked out. Uh, the Aether Paradise Stadium still gets knocked out by Abandoned Meteor Tempest. And then with, when you hit 250, it's just, it's too good. It's a really good number. But we discard energies and there's ways to get energies back. We'll talk about that with Magazone and the Stadium later. And then we have Sun Eclipse GX over here. You hit for 250. <laughs> so if your Meteor Tempest is going to knock out, hitting for 280 with a Choice Band, that could work for you, but you can only use this attack if you're behind on prizes. So that's not it's not bad. Uh, we have other GX attacks in this GX attack in this deck that we could probably use as well. But this is definitely one if you want to get a really big knockout and you don't have that many energies. So me does mean the pretty good card. Of course, we are playing it with the Magnazone. You guys know what Magnazone does. Magnazone has been doing the same thing for a long time now. A magnetic circuit, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a um, metal energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So you essentially deluge Blastoise, but you can attach everything you want, but with metal energies. Now, by that itself, it's not good. Like, come, like it's okay. With this, with Mag oh, this with Duskman, it's pretty okay. It's not like broken, it's not great. But <laughs> then they came in the Stadium card Mount Cornet that really made this combination a little bit wonky. Um, Mount, Mount Cornet over here, Mountain Cornet. Once during each player's turn, that player may put two metal energies from their discard pile into their hand. So it's an energy retrieval every turn as a stadium, <laughs> which pairs really well with Magazine because you know energy retrievals are always nice. So as you can see, this little combination here is what makes this deck run, but we are playing some things to make this deck a little bit more consistent <clears throat> as well. Uh, excuse me, guys, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. Had a long day. Uh, we have two Dialga GX. I am playing two. I feel like Dialga is too good to not play two. Uh, 180 HP Dragon type Pokemon weak to Fairy, which is not a big deal because you can literally use any of your metal attackers to knock out Gardevoir <laughs> and not play this Dialga down. You should be fine. But it has three interesting attacks. Overclock is really, really good early game. Draw out cards until you have six cards in your hand. It's so good. You usually want to lead with Dialga or switch into Dialga. And if you can pull that off and you can just overclock, you should be able to set up your board relatively quickly and easily. 
So shout out to Dialga for that. Shred is cool because it can hit past effects, so you can hit past the abilities of Hoopa from Light Shining Legends, uh, as well as Ninetales. You can hit past the effects of Jolteon, 2 it KOing Jolteon because they only have 160 HP. So that's handy. And then Timeless GX, I think, arguably, maybe even unarguably, the best GX attack in the game. <clears throat> Being able to hit for 150 and your opponent skips their turn. You literally take another turn after this one. You skip your opponent's turn. They can't play. You get two turns in a row. And there's so many situations where that's good. Uh, for instance, the main one, the thing that's the most exciting is you can have a Magna Zone set up. You set up Dialga in one turn. You choice bend the Dialga. You Guzma up a Lele. You knock out the Lele. <laughs> and then <laughs> you take two prizes from that. Then your opponent doesn't do anything. So it's your turn again. You retreat the Dialga. Back into your mag, uh, back into your necrozma. You, you you use the energies you got rid of with Mount Cornet. Uh, you use the energies that you get rid of to put back in your hand, probably with Mount Cornet, and then you attach those to <laughs> necrozma, and then you take another two prizes with Duskwing necrozma. You can take four prizes before your opponent can do anything, and that happens a lot of games. So Dialga GX, very very powerful Pokemon in this deck. Now, the Magnemite line is something I've been playing around with a lot. This is something I'm trying out today for the first time. I really like this one, the Sparkling Induction Magnemite, but it is weak to Buzzwool. So what I'm doing is I'm playing two of the Sparkling Induction and one of the Solid Unit. Uh, this one means that you're, you can't be attacked while you're on the bench. So it's pretty handy if you get out two Magnemites, like one here in the active, and then like you get this one on your bench. Here, this one's immune to damage, while this one I mean, if you're playing against Buzzwell, you want to make sure you have this one on your bench. But for the most part, just having free retreat so you can switch into your Dialga easier is pretty good. And though, of course, the Magneton doesn't really matter. Also, there's another Magnemite I do want to talk about. <clears throat> something I've been trying a little bit, and something I want to keep trying, is I've been playing this one. It has Searching Magnet. Search your deck for three Metal Energies and put it put them into your hand, which is handy for deck thinning in the early game, as well as just getting Metal Energies in your hand is always just decent in this deck. I tried that out though, and I just want to try this one next. So obviously the Magnemite line is really up to preference. So that's what I'm trying right now. We have our first Prism card of the video, Sogaleo Prism. It has 160 HP, another basic non-GX EX attacker, which is kind of important, uh, because the only other non-GX attacker we have is Magnezone, which is not bad, but you know, being able to hit 160 is so much better than 130, because that's 190 with the choice man. But anyways, we have the attack Radiant Star, which is like, just amazing. If you get Garbodor locked or anything like that, it's just nice to have the Sogaleo in the back. For each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a mount of energy card from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. So, Radiant Star, set up your board no matter who's on, <laughs> no matter what Garbodor is out, no matter what ability locking your opponent can do, <clears throat> which I think is only our Garbodor right now. And then you have Corona Impact, being able to hit 160, but you can't attack during your next turn. It's not bad at all. I think it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty good card. <laughs> Probably the best one. I actually need to get, the, get this one IRL. I don't have it yet. <clears throat> and I think the only Pokemon left is two Lele's. And we are playing a 1-1 Octillery line, a relatively new addition to this deck. I like it. I definitely don't hate it. So we're going to be trying it out a little bit. 1-1 line. I mean, usually they don't want to attack this. They want to attack anything here. <laughs> so usually your Octillery's are safe. And that's it for the Pokemon line. As far as items go, we are playing two Field Blowers because Field Blowers are good. Uh, four Rare Candies. I can actually drop to one Field Blower, but right now we're playing two. I just like having two. Four Ultra Balls, four Mount Cornets. I am playing four because I feel like it's too important to not play four. Two Bridgets and three Guzmas. This is something I want to play a four of count. I wouldn't blame you if you did play four. I feel like it's so good in this deck that like it would, it would be beneficial to play four. But right now I can only make room for three because I am playing the Octillery line. Three ends and four Sycamore. I was playing four ends initially, but in my deck testing, I ended up not having an N in it, and I never noticed for weeks. <laughs> I was testing the IRL for a long time, and I didn't realize I only played three ends until much later when I was actually showing the deck off to a friend. So apparently, when the deck plays three ends, it works fine. So I decided to keep up with that uh, with that idea and just put three ends in there. And I made a cut for a Skyla here. Skyla's just good because it can give you rare candy or Ultra Ball. Three choice bands. I feel like three is better than I used to play two, but three is just better because you need it for Dialga's GX attack. It's too good. It's too good. Four DCEs. The idea of playing DCEs is something I talk about a lot. A lot of people disagree with me, but after they try it, they realize that it's really good. I'm talking to you, Pat. <clears throat> Let's see. Meteor Tempest does discard three energies from this Pokemon, and it does involve a colorless attack too. So ideally, you attach a DC to the Krozma, right? Then you can discard three energies. That means one DCE, one metal. 
is all you have to discard. Then the following turn, you get two metal energies from your discard pile using Mount Cornet. You attach them using Magnezone. And now, instead of having to like dig for a third energy, you have two energies on your Duskwing Necrozma already. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. So that's why I'm playing them as well as nine metal energies. But that's going to be the deck list, guys. Let's go ahead and get a couple of games. Well, hopefully I remember to cut this out. I didn't remember the last video though, aren't you guys proud of me? If I don't remember here, then we can, we can have some intimate conversation. Uh, what's the deck called again? <laughs> I think it's called Duskmane Zone. I have too many decks. I need to clean this out now that there's a new set. And I'm going to be building a lot of decks. There it is right there. And I'm going to be building a lot of decks. But let's find a game. Maybe we can, maybe we can play against some Gardevoir and be hilarious. <laughs> hey guys, we're back. It looks like we're playing against a Greninja build. It's either Greninja or Empoleon, one or the other. Uh, either way, having 190 HP on Necrozma is actually super huge in this matchup. That means you have to have a max bench or they, ha or you have to, or they have to land choice bands and knock you out. This opening hand is almost amazing. <laughs> almost amazing. But I think we will just leave this. We'll keep the Magnum mic safe on the bench. Because I can't rely on getting a Bridget even though we're going to get some mulligans here. But we have... A magma and Necrozma. We can attach a DCE and play in. So he is playing. Ooh, he is playing E hammers in his list. That's new. Ooh, usually this deck doesn't make space for uh, E hammers. Um, this is actually not bad. I don't really want to play my stadium yet, but I mean it doesn't hurt to play it. We have a lot of them. Losing a DCE is an awful ever in this game. And if he, he's playing the 60 HP pip up, which is so good for us, I think I will just play the Sycamore here. Oh, one card I did cut was uh, was Rescue Stretcher. I'm hoping that doesn't bite me in the butt. It doesn't look like it will. If my if my Magnemite stays safe, we could, we could be in a really good position next turn. We can get some big attacks off really early. So if my Magnemite stays safe here, we're in a, we're in a great position. Yeah, that doesn't even matter because we I think we have we have three. We don't have four yet. We need to draw something if we get four. But at least we're burning his E-Hammers now. It's not a big deal. He's going to play Bridget here. We don't even have to have a full bench. Ideally, we can get a Timeless off this game, though. That would be nice. So I want to get Dialga down sooner rather than later. And I think I'm going to try to play Weavile Zoark next, because that seems like the most fun. I do want to play Empoleon at some point, but I feel like other people, enough other people have talked about and uploaded Empoleon and played Empoleon for me to not really want to worry too much about it. But we're gonna knock out on this and anything else. He can get a full bench, but it won't be it won't be too much of an issue. Let me do this first. So we can knock out a baby, maybe take a decent prize here. Um let's see, boom. Boom. But we are we are in a really awkward position. So I'm hoping that we can draw out of this at some point. Because once we can draw out of this, we'll be in a really good place. For now, we'll just Claw Slash. And if we can get one more energy, we can knock out whatever comes in. But if we... We can get two a KO'd here if he has a Rare Candy in hand, which he probably does since he grabbed Napoleon. Luckily, we grab a Sycamore here, but... Now that I'm playing the 1-1 Octillery line, maybe it is important that I play the Stretcher. So I'm probably going to put in the Stretcher soon. Let's see. He went into the active Piplup, up, but does he have Aqua Patches? You need Aqua Patches and you need to be able to retreat. He does have 70 HP though, which makes his game pretty awkward for me. <clears throat> At least this Embolian does. I think Dennis uploaded a video where he had a one count of the splatter and three of these, which is an interesting idea. I, I think I'd rather just play four of these, honestly. Splatter's cool, but I don't think it's super necessary. I can I don't want to sick more because I don't want to lose any more Mount Cornets. Because if they play Brooklet, it'd be nice if I It'd be nice to not lose it. At the same time, I really want to play Rank Octillery as well. So if I can avoid playing Melkornets, that'd be nice. I think ideally here, I can get a Dialga down and... Oh, he's going to end me. That's really nice. Uh, ideally, I can get a Dialga down and Guzma up at Lele after being able to set up my... After being able to set up Dialga. That would be the most ideal turn because then I can take like three prizes in one turn, most likely. 
We'll see what happens here though. We do get to preserve our artillery and Mount Cornet this way. I wish I played down a Choice Man, but honestly the Choice Mans are exclusively for Dialga in this matchup, so it doesn't really matter too much. We did get another Metal Energy and another Magnemite. Do I want to play down this Magnemite? Can he ever hit 150 against me? I don't want to play down cards I don't have to. So I'm trying to avoid doing that, but I kind of want to put down a second Magnemite just in case shenanigans. One, two, three, four, five. He's hitting me for 100. 130 with a choice ban, but this, to hit me for 150, you have to hit 160, which is eight bench Pokemon. So I feel relatively safe doing this. And I'll just end here. I don't want to give my opponent more cards, but like, I want more stuff. Dialga is pretty nice. Ooh. Depending on the next turn, can he hit 180? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8 is 160, 180 with a choice band. There's no point in me playing this down quite yet, so I'm not going to. I think I'm just going to keep taking knockouts. I can't mount Cornet right now. Shredding is good as well. I could just shred this turn, but then he could knock me out with a choice band, which is what I want to avoid. Right now, I guess 1, 2, yeah, if I don't bench a Pokemon, he can never knock me out with a choice band. So I think I'll well just Meteor Tempest here. Just keep taking prizes slowly. That's the thing whenever you're playing against these one prize attacking decks, you want to take as many prizes as you can. Put yourself so ahead in the game that it doesn't even matter. If I can top deck a choice band and another, like a, like a DCE, we'd have a perfect turn here. Yeah, if I can top deck, I can't top deck both choice band and DCE. But if I can put myself in a position to where I can maybe even knock out this with the timeless, that could be really nice. But I am pretty weak to end right now, so I do want to try to get another, I want to try to get a Remoraid down. That's fine. Uh, actually, right now it's not that fine. Right now it's pretty bad. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, we need to get more cards. I guess we can Sycamore. I just don't like losing all these cards in my hand. <clears throat> but we can use this time to get a Remoraid down, but I don't want to be too weak to Total Command, but at this point I think I have to fill up my bench because this is a thing. So I can Brooklyn here to get Remoraid. Because ideally, I take a knockout this turn, right? I'm gonna just fill up my bench here because I am in a really awkward position. I can't knock him out in one hit, so I think I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna do this because I know that I'll make the mistake <laughs> if I don't do it now. I have to make sure I never manually attach because if I get DCEs, that'd be a better way to attach. We'll play Sycamore here. We need, we need our stadium. We should have three more. Yeah, we should have plenty left in the deck. We did see exactly what I was talking about. We got the DCE. We actually have a really good next couple of turns. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. We have a, because like, with our hand, <laughs> we had a really good next couple of turns, man. We could have even, we, did, we could have even pulled off the GX attack, probably in the following turn. Although we did lose our Guzmas, if I had one more in the deck, I could have Lele'd for the Guzma, took, a, took the GX knockout on Lele, and then won the game the following turn just by retreating into my other Duskman. DCs are really powerful in this deck, man. They really do change a lot in this deck. But we'll go ahead and get another game. We'll see, we'll see, uh, we'll see how many wins we can take. The problem with this deck is that if you can't set up Magnazone really early, it's really awkward. So I'm I've been playing a lot of like Skyla accounts to try to try to mitigate that issue. And right now I'm down to one. And I want to keep trying out more and more counts. This is a really good turn for us, because we get an attachment as well as like a bridge at this turn. And we're going first. And my opponent's playing Weavile. Rule of Evil is super scary. I don't know what this deck is. He's playing Shauna and Cynthia. Bro, my dude is all about that shuffle draw. So Weavile is kind of scary. But Weavile doesn't affect Necrozma or Dialga, but it does affect my Lele and <laughs> my Magnazone, which is something I want to avoid. But as long as we can set up the board pretty nicely and safely, we should be okay for the most part. I'm just going to go ahead and bridge it here. We'll get another... This can prevent bench damage. We'll get a Dialga and Necrozma here. We should be safe for the most part. I could also get a Remoraid. Probably over a Dialga right now, we can get a Remoraid. I like Remoraid. But Auxiliary is another Pokemon that's weak to the whole draw support thingy. So, 
I mean, all these Pokemon will take damage, but they're one prize Pokemon. I don't know if they matter too much. Shred is really good in this matchup as well, but like it is 90 HP, so it's just short of the knockout. I think I'm gonna grab Dialga. Yeah, I think I will grab Dialga. This Timeless is just so good in this game. <clears throat> I'll switch into Dialga, and I can overclock later. I mean, he's playing spread damage attacking. Like, he has Honchkrow, Weavile, <laughs> Tapu Koko. This man's all about putting that spread damage on the board. And he's gonna end me, which is uh, kind of sucky, because I had a really good hand, but I mean, we could still get another good hand. I don't think this Choice Man's gonna come in to play this matchup, just because I don't think he plays GXers, GX Pokemon. He might play Lele, which, I mean, most decks play Lele, so it's not, like, unheard of. We can get Rare Candy here, but Rare Candy won't do much for us. So it's just since he can get a Weavile sooner rather than later, which sucks. Ooh, this is better. Yeah, um, I think I'm just gonna toss the whole thing, honestly. Let's, yeah, let's do that. I think I'm just gonna play the Lele. Ah, oh, but if I played on Lele, then I'm like putting myself in potential. I should have feel blood. Why do I always do this? I literally do this all the time. <laughs> This would have been good for me if he took damage on his Weavile, so I'm not going to lie, but whatever, I think we'll be fine. I'll go ahead and play down Lele. I don't like playing down the Lele because I'm just, I'm weak to, uh, I'm weak to things and I don't like being weak to things, but at the same time, I also like setting up my board. So if I can get like a, well, I can't manually attach anymore. I should have just taunt, oh, I should have tossed the energy. I shouldn't have attached the energy. Yeah, bro, I should have tossed the energy. We can get zone here. I should have 100% tossed the energy. I'm a little mad at myself now. Uh, I don't need to do that yet. Uh, I also want to get Magnezone this turn. The question is, what do I toss? I definitely toss the Ultra Ball, but do I toss Artillery or do I toss like DCE? Because DCE means I can GX attack probably next turn. I think I toss. I think I toss Artillery. Yeah, I think we toss Artillery. And hopefully we can get a really good turn next turn. Uh, because we're gonna play Sycamore, I don't see any. I don't see too much harm in playing down a Mount Cornet now. Because we could draw another one. We'll just overclock for four. There we go. We can get two Magnezones down, and we can get a Choice Band. Attach a DCE. Yeah, that's. I mean, dude, this, the consistency tonight is just kind of clean. By the way, I don't even know if my music's playing because I haven't had my headphones in this whole time. Also, I really hope my audio is recording. Okay, it looks like it's recording. That would have been really awkward if I had like this really good video and <laughs> nothing worked. Also, somebody in the comments yesterday, shout out to you, Steven, kept saying, uh, kept saying like, take a shot for every time Aura says awkward. And guys, don't do that because you would probably die. I don't know why I say awkward so much, but apparently that's a thing I do. So <laughs> let's don't do it, all right? He's playing Volcanion. Now, this is going to be fun. This will be interesting to watch. Uh, what can set up better? Obviously, Volcanion is a little bit more aggressive and can definitely set up better. But if I can get out a Dialga to lead with, we'll be in a really good place because Dialga's not weak to fire. Maybe Volk won't be able to Oko us. And uh, Dialga can GX a Volcanion, which is pretty cool. Oh, uh, we just need Pokemon. That'd be nice. My opponent has one Mulligan. He's playing two Guzmas at the very least. It's good to see. It's always good to see, like, Guzma counts. I'm assuming, like, you would say, you would think Volcanion plays, like, a 4 of count because of how important it is in their deck. But we'll see. We're going first, which is good. So if I can get, like, a Torment Bridget and just a bunch of Magnemite out and a Dialga, that could be really nice. And you know what? There we go. <laughs> it looks like it looks like it worked out pretty nicely for me after a couple mulligans. Uh, I don't want to lead Necrozma. I'm probably, yeah, I'm definitely going to be playing Bridget this turn. Especially, like, look at my, look at my hand, bro. It's kind of nice. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get down our Dialgas. Or at, le at least one Dialga, just so we can have it in the lead. So let's go ahead and do this. We have a really, really, really good opening hand here. Uh, Bridget, see what our deck's got. We have two ends prize, but that's about it. I think we have two. Do we have one in our hand? We do not have one in our hand. Uh, so the awkward part about this, right, is that I could get Magnezone next turn, but then I'll be stuck. So I don't have a draw supporter. So... Nothing thing I want to do. I could also get Octillery this game, which is probably better. Let's do that. Magnemite, Dialga, Oct Octillery. Or Remoraid, I guess. Remoraid, Magnemite, 
and Dialga. Uh, I have to be careful. I need to make sure I get draw support. I think there was another Lele in the deck, so I think I will Ultra Ball for Lele or Octillery. <clears throat> I think I actually Ultra Ball for Octillery. I am going to be able to clock up a, a pretty good amount this game. And we do have two Dialgas in the deck, so overall I'm not too worried about it. I don't see a reason to bench this because it is weak to fire. So I'll bench it whenever I want to attack. For the time being, I'm not interested. So let's go ahead and pass it up. Hopefully get Octillery, like a good Octillery draw. We can Ultra Ball away these Metal Energies next turn. Uh, and I don't I don't want to play down any more Lele's if I don't have to. But I guess playing down Necrozma is like technically worse than playing down Lele. But at least Necrozma can take Okos. But you, I could like totally load up a Lele. If they have three energies, then how many energies does a Lele need to knock it out? To hit 180, you need nine energies, right? So... If they have three, this would need six, but if I were to, I could attach five and a choice band and knock things out with Lele. Lele might be a monster this matchup, we'll see. I, thought you saw, I never even thought about that, because I haven't, I don't play a lot of Volcanion IRL. <laughs> Nobody likes Volcanion, uh, because Volcanion's the worst deck ever, yeah! Do shouts to you, Amanda? Hashtag, back to the past. Hashtag, uh, Volcanion's not that bad, I just don't like it. <laughs> He's got Turnator as well. So Turnator is another Pokemon I can knock out with Lele. But usually they attack and discard, so it's like, eh, it's up there. Also, I can still very easily be knocked out, so I'm hoping that he doesn't set up super well. And I would need I need to like get Guzmas to really abuse my Dialga. But I actually don't mind timelessing an, a Volcanion just so I can attack something else. Or at least use Guzma the same turn. Timeless is just so strong. Even if you're not like taking four prizes with it, just being able to skip your opponent from using cards like Max Luxor and in this case Power Heater is just really, really, really powerful. Do they have any fire energies down there? He's playing the belt version. Luckily for me, well, unluckily for me, actually, Timus does not knock this out through belt, but, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. But like, luckily for me is what I was trying to say, that belts don't matter on these Volks because they still get knocked out by Necrozma. Except this one, then I would need a choice band. See, look at this, like, <laughs> This is one of the examples of like a really potentially good turn. Let's go ahead and drop a Necrozma and you. Let's grab, if I grab Octillery, the chances of me drawing off of it are, drawing something decent off of it are pretty low, I think. But we're gonna do our best anyways. We, I believe in the heart of the cards, it's just that simple. I'm gonna get Magnazone and a Draw Sporter. Oh, well, almost. I do wanna get rid of this, because if I can pull it off this turn, it'd be really nice. I have four rare candies, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stick more here. Ah, if only I drew a rare candy there. Um, Mount Cornet's decent, but it's not super useful right now. Need a rare candy soon. I can draw cards next turn though, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, well, if I'm gonna overclock, I'm gonna play this down there. Just, just draw cards off overclock, honestly. The second he starts being aggressive, we can just start taking Okos. So, assuming we can get a rare candy, we need a rare candy sooner rather than later. If he takes the knockout, I could get Skyla. Because right now, like getting rare candy is decent because we have two energies in the discard pile if he knocks us out. And we have another Dialga as well, so. If shenanigans ensue, then we can really abuse it. Let's see if he chooses to knock me out here or play Guzma and knock out Necrozma. If he knocks out Necrozma, it's kind of bad because we only have one more left in the deck. So I have to I have to take that into account. But like I said, Lele is probably going to be a monster this game. But I do want to knock out the Turtonator beforehand because Turtonator is like the biggest threat to this deck. Because Lele or because Lele is ha is going to have a harder time knocking out. Um knocking out this card just due to the nature of the deck right because he did because he discards his energy when he attacks which means Lele can't do as much we'll see what we top deck here I can't overclock him for knockout which is unfortunate but if I get like a rare candy here I could 100% uh, play what's it called I could 100% Guzma this turn we didn't get a rare candy but we did get a Guzma uh, this is really awkward so I don't know who I want to attach to to take a knockout. 
Ideally, I can Guzma and like GX something, right? But that's in a super ideal world. Actually, it's not that ideal. I can just grab Skylar right now. But I can't Skylar and Guzma at the same time, so... This might have been a misplay that I just made. <laughs> this might have been a super bad misplay I just made. Uh, I think this was a super bad misplay I just made. I mean, I can take two prizes at the very least. Sure, let's just grab Skyla. I can Guzma the following turn, maybe. I just want to make sure my opponent can't do too much in one turn. We'll Skyla here for a rare candy. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and GX now. I made the misplay, so I might as well go with it. It is really late at night for me, and I had a long day, so these are the things that happen. Uh, we'll rare candy here into zone. DCE down. Draw one with Octillery. No, that's not what I wanted. Grab this. We can shred the following turn. We have a little bit of damage on us, which is definitely going to be our downfall. But we can retreat into anything else and probably be in a good place. And we can play Sycamore the following turn as well. So we'll go ahead and Timeless here. We got another zone, but nothing we can really abuse it with. I think I will just... If I Sycamore, I'm losing Dialga. This is the one thing I don't like right now, is just that I'm losing Pokemon I don't want to lose. I could manually retreat into anything and just have energies on it. We have one more Necrozma, we take one prize here, and then Lele can probably pick up the slack later. So I'm just gonna stick more. We even have a Duskmane in hand that can do some work. Do we have any energies in the discard pile? We don't. Um, so we can Ultra Ball for free, just to get like a Magnemite or something. We can draw off Dialga as well. And Magneton. <clears throat> no reason for me to choice ban anything right now, and I do want to try to preserve energy. So, we can play this here. I know we can draw more, but I don't think it's worth... I don't think it's worth having the surprise factor of a choice band. We got another DCE. Let's go ahead. Uh, do we need to? We should, just because that would get us more energies in our hand. But I do want to preserve them for Necrozma, so I'm not going to attach them. But I'll go ahead and Shred for Knockout. It's so much. It's so it's so crazy how much you can accomplish when your opponent skips their turn. <laughs> if he doesn't end me, we're in a good place. If he does end me, we have this. If he knocks me out, we still have three energies in the discard pile. So it's not like we actually wasted our Cornet and we're like putting ourselves in a bad position by shuffling energies back in. We did attach a DCE for the turn. And with his Turtonator gone, the only Pokemon that really can be an issue to Lele is kind of gone. Not like offensively, but defensively, you know, like he can discard his energies to attack while Volcanion can't. And ideally he takes a knockout soon, just so we can knock more things out with Lele. I mean, with uh, with Necrozma. I do want to take like one big knockout with Necrozma to end the game. We can Ultra Ball if he doesn't take a knockout here, then put the Metal Energies back into our hand, just to get Magazone down and thin out the deck some more. We definitely don't want to Sycamore. In fact, we're probably gonna like load up Lele and Guzma, most likely. Unless, of course... I don't know. Because we can attach a bunch of energy. We can manually retreat Lele and attach a bunch of energies to, uh, or we can manually retreat into anything and then Guzma up the Volcanion and knock it out by attaching a bunch of energies to Volcanion. Please don't have a, please don't get a Turtonator. You don't have any more turtles, do you? Turtles are kind of annoying. Okay, he's getting another Volcanion. I'll take that. Volcanion's not an issue. Volcanion's a non-issue. He's instructing. I think you should play Octillery and, and Volcanion nowadays. It just seems so good, especially if you're playing Brooklet. Octillery's in such a good place in the meta right now. He's e-hammering, which is fine. <clears throat> oh, wait a minute. Now it's a lot less fine. But we should still have plenty of energies. No biggie there. And I don't think he'll be able to knock me out here. 60 damage, 90 damage. If he gets one more steam up, he should be able to knock me out, right? 
He's an N. That sucks that he got that N. I was hoping that after all those cards he wouldn't have in his hand. One of them wouldn't be an N. But overall, we still got DCE in hand. Uh, we have another Mount Cornet if he does manage to do any shenanigans. What we don't have is a Guzma. So there's only one more in the deck. So that's a little bit unfortunate because Guzmas are going to be our win con. We also don't have a Field Blower right now. We have one in the deck, but we just don't have one, have one in hand at the moment. Okay, so everything has one energy attached to it, and he's going to be able to make it to where they have two. So, but it's not a knockout, and that's what matters, which means we get to preserve our Pokemon. He doesn't take any free prizes this turn. And with 170 HP, in order to hit one step... Oh, we got a Guzma. That actually changes everything. Is that enough for a knockout, though? I don't think it is. To hit 180, we'd have to have nine. Um... But we have to hit 150 because we have a choice band. To hit 150, we have to have 8. 8 is DCE plus 6 metal energies. That's too many metal energies. I don't think we can do it. No. 2 more. 4 more. Because he has 4, right? Huh, this, is, this became really interesting. Hmm. How do I want to approach this now? Because I need to get four energies on a top of Lele. Four metal energies on top of Lele, I should say. Which means I can try to draw them. But I don't want to goose them up something that I'm not going to be able to guarantee knockout. I think what I'm going to do first is retreat into this. We toss these boys. I want to Ultra Ball and fail it just so I can draw more. I feel, Am I doing math right? To hit 160, which is 150, because uh, we have Choice Band, you need 8 Metal Energy. You need energies all, 8 energies all together. He has 2, which means I need to have 6. Which means I need to get 4 Metal Energies, which means I have to draw 2 Metal Energies. I'm going to go for Broke here, because it seems like a lot of fun. <laughs> we'll thin the deck out a little bit with this. But if I can draw... If I can draw, like... Just another way to, if I can draw two metal energies, just two metal energies will be fine. Oh my god, we did it. That's wild. He'll be able to get a revenge knockout, but if we can get a necrozma, I think we just win. We actually did it though, which is really cool. Uh, Mount Cornet. How many DCs are left? I think that's my last DC. No, we have one more, so we still have a chance. There we go, that is a knockout. He needs a two steam ups to knock us out. Unless he gets a choice band or a belt. We get another metal, G metal energy in hand, which is always welcome. Because that means we can retreat easier if he does knock us out here. Because if we can set up a dusk main this turn, which is highly possible if we get DCE and three, uh, like we don't even need DCE, we just need four energies of any kind. Uh, between Mount Cornet, the man, the attachment that we're going to have from Magnezone to switch out our Lele from the active, and just drawing in general. We can even Field Blower our own Mount Cornet to play another Mount Cornet if we draw another Mount Cornet. <laughs> There's a lot of Mount Cornet in that sentence. He's going for the two prizes, which is smart, but not at the same time because I can win with another Guzma. But I think he just assumes I'm playing three, which is a good assumption to make because he's right. But in, a, in an actual tournament, I would never do that. Like in my life, I would never do that. But it is, it's, it's also kind of safe <clears throat> at the same time, just because, <laughs> uh, do we have any metal energies down there? We, we will have a second one after the second one. Oh man, it's really annoying that he like, he just, he, he put it all in this. It's really annoying that he did that. I could attack with a Magnezone, which would be fun, but he had, he would win with a Guzma the following turn. He has three Guzmas down. You know what, if he's going to assume I'm playing three, I'm going to assume he's playing three as well. The question is, do I end him down to two? I think I do. I think I play it super safe and end him down to two, just because I have access to Octillery. Now let's try to get a Field Blower. <laughs> let's do our best to get a Field Blower and a bunch of energies on a Magnezone. <clears throat> 
I guess I should attach this energy down just so I don't lose it. I should have also retreated. I should have gone into Lele and um, did some shenanigans with that, honestly. Bring him down to two cards. Choice man and Ultra Ball. Hmm. Hmm. Can Choice Man win me this game? It will within the Necrozma out. I just need to draw one Metal Energy. I did not get it. I mean, at this point, it makes sense that we lift it, but it is still kind of annoying. How many energies we got down here? We have exactly two, right? We have one. All right, so we don't want to do too much then. I could Ultra Ball away some stuff, but I don't feel like it's necessary. I just have to hope my opponent doesn't have Guzma. So we got Octillery next turn as well. The first person to attack loses, right? Or the first person to switch into their main attacker loses. So I can't be the first one to do it. But if I could get a Field Blower, I don't even know what's in the deck right now, but a Field Blower's price is going to be kind of annoying. Because I could actually Oko him if, I, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't have a Field Blower. I can Ultra Ball away a rare candy, but I don't really think I want to. He has two steam ups and belts. Oh, maybe. Mm, maybe that's not smart actually. Sycamore. Okay, well Sycamore is better than him getting like anything else. I'm pretty sure I don't have any more ends in the deck though. I think I started this game with only one end. That's annoying. At the same time it doesn't really matter, right? He has his own field blower. We have our own map coordinate, so actually this is better for us because we can thin out our hand a little bit. But uh, <laughs> so much awkward though. He can attack us and not take a knockout. Oh wait a minute, doesn't he take a knockout because we're weak to fire? That's oh I think he does. I think he hits us for 60 right now. If he hits us for 90, he takes a knockout, but if he hits us for 60, we should be safe. Alright. So he did hit up for 90. How many how many fire energies are gone? There's five in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's 11 energies gone. Do I pull the trigger? I think I pulled the trigger. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11. That's 11 fire energies gone. He needs to get a double steam up to win. I'm gonna go into this just because I can retreat at the very least. <clears throat> You can Sycamore. I don't really, I'm not really feeling Sycamore. Maybe I should put Stretcher back. I don't know, man. Stretcher doesn't really help me this game. Play this Choice Man down. You play down the Mount Cornet. If I Sycamore, I can lose just through deck out, right? And also, I don't disconnect on me. That'd be really bad. I don't want to have that in my hand. I don't have any more DCs, so I'm relying on getting metal energies. We do have Field Blower. Oh man. With us having Field Blower, if I draw, if I can like get lucky enough to draw all three metal energies, we have a chance to win. But the thing, he can just go into his non belted Volcanion. I lose to a Guzma no matter what, right? Let me grab this. No matter what, I lose to a Guzma, so I don't think it matters too much. I need to draw all three metal energies and a field blower. <laughs> we whiffed all of our metal energies. Okay, well, because what I could have done is if I drew like two metal energies, that would have been fine as well. Hmm. I can get rid of his blowers. I can get rid of his 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 things. These things. And then he'd only need one steam up to knock me out. Okay, to hit 170, I need nine energies, which is eight with this. I don't have enough to do that. And I do want to knock this thing out. If I knock it out though, he can make something else active, which is not something I really want to do. But I don't want this to take damage if that's the case either. 
So I think I have to knock out. Maybe it's a bad play to knock out the active. I don't know, man. It's really late at night. I don't think I care that much. <clears throat> Although if I knock out... If he has Guzmas, he wins. If I get rid of the belts on the bench... I could attack with like the other Lele if he doesn't have Guzma. Hmm. I can knock this out here, I think. To hit 130, it's 7 energies, and I have enough to do that. Then he's put into a position to where he has to win the game this turn. So... <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is two more. And he has 130 HP, so 140 is seven. So I think we attach one to the Necrozma here, and two to this. And just hope for the best. Dude, this is where that stupid frying pan card would come in clutch. I wish I had N in the deck, man. I really wish I had N in the deck. And it would have been so clutch because we would have been able to end him down to one and pretty much <laughs> pretty much negate Guzmas. But he needs to have two energies in hand. Or one energy in hand and like yeah, he needs to have two energies in hand no matter what to win the game. Can he get two energies in hand? There was eleven energies gone. Like in his field and in his deck there were eleven energies. Yeah, there's one. Let's see a steam up. Oh god. I think that's game if he has a draw supporter. Oh, he has all of his sick and wars. Never mind, he just has a bunch of different arts. So he should have like one in his hand, I think. Yeah, I'll tell him well played. Uh, not, that's not well played. This is well played. Can't do much about that. Unfortunately, if I just let, let if I just kept letting my Pokemon take damage, I would have lost that game at some point. And he had two steam ups regardless, so I don't think it mattered. Uh, all right. <clears throat> all right that was fun this has been a good video uh it fires fire though you can't it's hard to beat fire you can definitely beat it but because of the fact that i lost so many guzmas early game and this is exactly what i'm saying if i had four guzmas in this game i would in this deck i would have won 100 would have won that's why i want to play four guzmas the question is i don't know what to drop four guzmas is so good but everything else in this deck is so good as well uh so your guess is as good as mine as far as what you should drop. I think the Skylight count should increase rather than decrease. I was originally playing two Choice Bands, so maybe I can go back to that, but Choice Bands are really good. So like, you need them for those belted Volcanians. <clears throat> a lot of people are saying to drop the Magneton, but because Item Lock is a thing now with, uh, with uh, Luxio, I don't like the idea of dropping Magneton. I'd rather keep the Magnetons around just so I can evolve hard if I have to. A lot of people are saying drop Dialga, but you just saw in that matchup how important it was for us to have two Dialgas. Actually, in that matchup, we discarded a Dialga. But as you can see, Dialga is really, 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 really good, and you don't want to have you don't want to have it prized, or you want to at least decrease the odds of having it prized. Uh, I know that Pet personally is dropping a Sycamore, but I'm also pretty positive he's not playing four Guzmas. So I'm past the person I talk about when it comes to this deck. We didn't really get to show off Sogaleo, but Sogaleo was prized in that other game, so. Because Sogaleo would have been a really good attacker. Being able to hit 160 would have been super duper good in this matchup. So Sogaleo being prized was actually really, really bad for us. Because Sogaleo could have taken knockouts with a choice ban. But it is what it is there. You could drop that Field Blower. But Field Blower came in super clutch that game. So I think... I don't know, man. You don't want to drop Burkani because consistency for Magnezone is super key, as you guys saw. Because we play such a heavy count of everything, everything seemed to come together. You could play heavy balls. And but the thing is, heavy balls don't get you Magnezone. So I think we have to stick to Ultra Balls. But so you can cut Ultra Balls and play heavy balls, but it doesn't get you Lele, it doesn't get you Magnezone, it doesn't get you Octillery. Having two bridges is good. Yeah, I'm just looking at this deck right now and it's like, I don't know. I don't know what I would drop. Maybe a Metal Energy, but having a lot of Metal Energies are super important. So I think you just one of those things where like you just have to be not unlucky. 
or maybe in that maybe in retrospect maybe I shouldn't played Sycamore and tossed the Guzmas when I did so that's, that's something that's a lesson learned right like don't toss Guzmas next time you play against Volcanian because you're gonna need them to win because you can win very easily without if you have Guzmas around so anyways I guess that's the video guys by the way <clears throat> don't forget to like the video if you haven't already subscribe if you want to if you want to help join if you want to join the or army we're trying to hit that 3k and we're getting real close uh let's leave a comment telling you tell me about what what changes you would make to these decks and stuff like that i do love one of my favorite thing to do is go to the comments and like have a have a conversation with people talking about like what they would and wouldn't play in decks like for instance yesterday in the lucario garchomp deck i just had a conversation with a dude that says he re he really likes puzzles in his deck list and i Talk to him like I told him I don't really like it because of this reason and then we just kind of had it back and forth and that's really fun to me That's really I love doing that stuff, man So don't forget to leave your comments Also, one thing I totally forgot to do is for those people that are watching this late in the video You guys might get rewarded. Let me know what your favorite Legendary Pokemon is That has different forms like I'm talking about the Shamans, the Giratinas, the Necrozmas. Let me know what your favorite legendary Pokemon is that has different forms in the comments down below. And I'll pick someone to give an Ultra Prism code to. So go ahead and do that. I'll pick a random person and I'll contact them later. Um, so do that for me. Drop a like if you haven't already. Subscribe to all the good jazz. Let me know what decks you want to see me play next time. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.